I've had enough heartache and enough headache. I've had so many ups and downs. I don't know how much more I can take. Mm. See, I've decided that I cried my last tears yesterday. Mm -hmm. Either I'm going to trust you or I may as well walk away. Cause stress it don't make it better. It don't make it better no way. See, I decided that I cried my last tears yesterday. I wanted to introduce this vlog by opening up singing before my husband comes up to preach. Do not give up and don't stress about it. Hand it over to the good Lord. He'll work it out. I hope you guys enjoy the message my husband is about to bring forth. And don't forget at the end of the video to thumbs up this video, to like it. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to turn on your post notifications because we would love to have you and to get all of the, all of the notifications that when we upload videos. And here is my husband. Everything that our ears have heard this morning, we thank God for just another opportunity to be back in service one more time. Um, and all of God's people being able to be on the call today and just being able to, to even though that we're on the call, just to be able to hear God's word one more time. Believe me, it's a blessing just to be here. It's a blessing to be alive and well and, and doing well. So I don't want to belong the time this morning. I'm going to, I'm going to share with you um, from the, back to the book of John, the sixth chapter, beginning at the 28th verse. Um, the 28th verse reads, Then said they unto him, What shall we do that we might work the works of God? 29th verse reads that, And Jesus answered and said unto them, This is the work of God, that ye believe in him whom he hath sent. And, and for the sake of time, we're just going to read those two verses. And then, um, and I know I told you last last sermon that I preached that, that I told you the power belongs to God. And I guess this is be another little addition or not necessarily a series off of that. But this will, this will be the power belongs to God part two. Only, only believe. Um, the Bible gives us strict uh, guidelines to what we as believers ought to do and what how we ought to behave ourselves. And and in this lesson, the the multitude that was following Jesus, um, Jesus had just begun to work a, a great miracle where he fed everyone. And he he had to rebuke the multitude that was following him because they they were they was following him with the wrong motives. They was following him and going after him with the wrong intent and heart. They was they was looking to be fed again, and they 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 went to look for Jesus. They couldn't find him, and they when they did finally find him, found him where he was at. They they asked him how did he get there because they knew they had they had had traveled the same path, but they knew. That they did not see him, but but the multitude was asking him um, a question. Now, and we get down to the question after Jesus had rebuked them and told them that that they're not following him for with the right motives. Now, Jesus, now they ask the question to come back at him: What must we do to be able to do the works of God? And 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 that's a very adamant question. Is and, and ain't none of us that, that are are following Christ and is living out the Christ. That question should, uh, at one point in time, come across our mind. What are we going to be able to do, or what should we do in order to do the works of God? And 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 over time, people sometimes get this a little twisted 
Um, if I can, if I can use my 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 term, they they get it twisted just a little bit because you, the works of God is not necessarily in the things that we do uh, for the Lord. The works of God is 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 based on, as Jesus said in the twenty ninth verse, that we believe. We have to learn to believe on the one that God has sent. Uh, and it's not necessarily an individual that we got to believe on. It's the one that he's, that the text that Jesus is telling the people that, that, that he's talking about is Jesus himself. They, the belief, he said that he was, let me read it. Um, the 28th 20, verse again said, Then said they, he said they unto him, What shall we do? What that we might do the works of God. Um, the 29th verse says, Jesus answered and said unto them, This is the word of God that ye believe on him whom he hath sent. Jesus gives us the answer here. Uh, and Jesus says that we should believe on him that the Father hath sent. And if we can believe on him, then we are doing the works of God. He is explaining to the Jews that, that this is the word to believe that he is the one that came down from heaven and that, that lived the life, that died upon the cross, we, we must put our faith in him. In the 30th verse, they said, Therefore unto him, What sign showest thou then, that we may see and believe thee? What does thou works? In other words, the people at that time, even though Jesus is giving them the answer, and the answer is very simple to them, that the only thing they have to do is believe on the word that he is preaching, that the Father sent him down now to, to live this life, and for him to do the will of the Father, they still try to justify themselves instead of just following in, in faith in what was said. See, when we are commanded to, uh, to let... To let, to let men see our good works in us, that God will be glorified in Matthew 5 and 16. Even though we are, are not saved by our works, we should be, we should have a desire to do the work of God. And then we should we should do the work and not and, and not just be doing it and just doing it for the sake of doing it. We should do the work because it's him that sent us. And Jesus was doing the work because the Father sent him down to do the work. And he was explaining it to them. And even though they hear what was being said, they still would not believe what God was trying to get them to see. And, that, and that's how we are sometimes. We Sometimes God is, is talking to us, but we still just not believing. It's, it's just as simple as that. It's just Believe what God is trying to tell us. God is speaking to us. God is talking to us. And we are having conversations with God, but we still lack the, the effort of putting forth the faith, what God is telling us to do, and to operate on the faith. Because the next thing that the commentary tells us, that we are commanded to show faith by words. Because if we really believe what God is saying, we will put forth the word. James 1 and 22 through 27 tells us we have to put forth the word. If, if we say we have the faith, we say we believe, if we don't put forth the word, then our faith is, is, is dead. If we say we have the faith and don't put the work into it, it is nothing but dead. If we say we're doing the work, but we don't have the faith in the work that we're doing, it is still dead. So what we're trying to do, we're trying to find the balance that we are believing in what Jesus said. We're believing that he had came and died for us. And now that we believe, we're going to put forth the work. It's not that our work is going to save us, but it's because we believe in the one that is doing the work. The one that came here to die, our work should be a resemblance of what he is doing. Our work should be an example because he has already laid the example so that men may see God in us. I, I didn't know... Um, that, 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 that God is trying to tell us. I didn't know that, that, that everything that we're doing is, 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 is the thing that God is trying to exemplify because sometimes as the, as the Sunday school lesson is going on this morning and I didn't know all that would be brought out here, but sometimes, and it, it took me that, that when it did come out because, because you know, God is, is, is yet established itself. Sometimes we as individuals, we have to show the glory of God. And then I'm going to show you in this message today that, that when, when these Jews, even though they're hearing about what God is doing, even they hear from the source himself, even though they hear from the one that's doing the work himself, they still lack the, 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 the opportunity of providing the faith 
in the one that is being given the instruction. And I, and I want you to know, I don't want to be like this. I don't want to miss God because God is telling me something that is a little bit crazy to me. And I don't understand what he's saying. And, then, and I miss God because I can't understand what God is trying to get me to see. I, My job as a believer is to, when God say it, is to believe it. And when God say it, is to act on what God has told me to do. So therefore, when it seems like you're crazy sometimes, but you're doing what God told you to do. And, and, and let me read on here because this lesson, this text is, is, is very good because Jesus said, I'm feeding you the bread from heaven. I'm feeding you the bread from heaven and, and you receiving the bread from heaven and the bread came from the Father. So if the bread came from the Father, now, now all the things you have to do is don't get it twisted. Don't look at the vessel that is coming through. Look at the look at the man that it's coming from. So let me let me read just a little bit more. It says in the third verse, it said, They said, therefore, unto him, What signs showest thou them that we may see and believe thee? What does thou work? And the third first verse, and this is how we get sometimes. It says, Our father did eat manna in the desert, as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. And, and Jesus had to come back and, and tell them again because see, they, they tell me, well, look, look, man, look, man my, my, my father, Moses, he gave us bread while we was out in the wilderness. He gave us bread. And, and, and look at what they were saying. Moses gave it. Moses gave it. And it wasn't Moses that gave it. It was the Father that rang it down. Listen to what Jesus said. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Moses gave you not that bread from heaven, but my fathers give you that the true bread from heaven. So now Jesus is letting us know, and, and as I said earlier, Jesus said, now don't you get it twisted now because Moses didn't give this bread to you. The bread didn't come from Moses. The bread came from the Father. So don't, don't be getting boasted up on things that, that, that you are saying that, that Moses did. And I'm letting you know that it wasn't Moses that did it. Moses was just the leader and the man that was called at the time to, to lead you out into the wilderness. But it was God that did the work and showed them because of the people moment and the complaining. And, and they complained that, they, that Moses had led them out there to die. God was the one that provided the, the, the bread and the manna from heaven that they can be feed, that feed off of. So it was Moses that done it, but it was God. And that's just like some of us, sometimes we go through some situation and we see that, in, that we got through it and we put the glory on the wrong being. It was nobody but God that brought us through the situation. Look back over your own life. Just see what God has already been saying. See what God has already done, done for you. And look how God was the one that really brought you out. You didn't do it yourself. It wasn't, a, it wasn't a, the, the man of God. It was just the, what God was doing through the vessel that caused you to be able to be a recipient of the glory that God had given you and the provision that God made for you. These men, they, they, they was talking about Moses did, but it was God that did the, did the work. It was God that fed them the matter for heaven. It was God that kept them them alive 40 years and their clothes never ran out. It was God that did it. And they should have been talking to the source and trying to tell the source who it was that it had to be Moses. No, Jesus had to correct them again because if, when we're falling and we're living without the Christ, we have to learn that, that we can't give the glory of God to the wrong individual. Because it wasn't, the, it wasn't your, your grandparents, your grandparents just let it, let it, it was the vessel that God used to. God wants to use you as the same vessel, but if you can hear and be faithful, by the, by the bread from heaven, then you will be that vessel. But if you won't allow that vessel to be fed, and my God, we got to we got to know that if we don't allow God to pour into us and hear what God is trying to say, we can't be that vessel. But what it is, God is looking for us to be willing to allow His work to work through us, so that men may see Him in us. That's, that's been my prayer every morning. One of my part of my prayer is, is God, uh, let them, Lord, let, let me see your work in it and that you may get the glory out of our life. See, we, we want God to get the glory. We want God to, to, to get the, 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 the evidence that he know that he is working within us. So we want to show God's power working and manifesting in our life. 
So no matter what we're going through, I thank God for the valley. Let me hurry up and get through this. I thank God for the valleys that we have to go through because the valley strengthens us. I thank God for the, the storms that we have to go through because somebody is looking at us while we're going through the storms. And those storms is set there just to strengthen us. So while we're going through, we have to be sure that we're eating the manna that came from heaven and putting the glory where it's, it belongs. All power belongs to God. Once have I heard it. Once have he spoken, twice have I heard that the power belongs to God. So we got to be sure that we give the glory to God. Let me read on just a little bit. In the, in the 32nd verse, then Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say unto you that, that Moses gave not that, that bread from heaven, but the Father gave us unto you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he which cometh down from heaven. And give his life unto the word. Then said they unto him, Lord, evermore give us this bread. Now Jesus said, the one, the bread of life is the one that came down to give life unto the word. And now listen at the Jews. Because this is where we get messed up sometimes. Because sometimes we ask God, we want that thing from God when God is explaining to us. When we hear that word and that word is telling us and, and, the, and we want it. We really do desire it. But when God goes revealing everything that goes along with what we're asking for, then we find out our asking, we're speaking one thing, and our action is like, no, oh, man, I can't do that because that ain't that ain't right. That I can't do that. That ain't right because we want to walk away from what God is really telling us to do. We just say it. We want it. And if you remember, we'll be just like Martha was in the last sermon that I preached. We say, I believe. We say that I believe. We say that 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 I believe. And then when it, when it comes down to it and the rubber meets the road, then we don't believe. So therefore, the Jews are saying, I, um, in the, in this third um, fourth verse, they said unto him, Lord, evermore give us this bread. And, and and we'll be saying that, Lord, give us this bread. And God going to give it to him, going to feed it to us. And then as soon as he's going to do it, then we want we want to back up off of it. As soon as he's going to, going to provide it, then we want to step away from it. Because look what it says in the 35th verse. And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that, that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. But I said unto you that ye also have seen me and believe not. Jesus said unto them, now you asking for it, but you have seen it. You don't watch it. You know, you know, if you just believe on it, because everyone that believes on me, he said, I'm going to take care of it. Everyone that believes on me, that hears the word and believes on it, I am the one that's, that's going to be able to provide for them. But you have heard it. Mm -hmm. you, 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 you heard it, but you didn't believe it. You heard it. And I'm trying to feed it to you, but you don't believe it. You asked for it, and I'm still trying to feed it to you, but you won't believe. So you got to learn that we got to apply faith to what we're saying. We got to walk by what we're saying. We just can't say this stuff, and God's going to do it for us, and we don't believe it. Because when God's going to perform it, because if you ask for it, you're going to ask the Lord, I believe you, I want it. I want it, and then God's going to give it to you, and then you got to be careful that we don't walk away from what God is trying to give us. Listen to what he said in the 37th verse. Jesus told them they wouldn't believe in the 36th verse. In the 37th verse, he said, All that the fathers giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will not in no wise cast out. If you come to him and you will come to him in the right way, he, he'll give you what you're asking for. He'll give it to you. He said, in no wise will I cast you out. If you want it, baby, you can receive it. If you want it, you can, you can get it from him. And if you want it, then and you're asking for it, God is right there to provide it for you. Because if you look at it, and, and, and I read the NLT version now, and I'm going to jump, jump around on you just a little bit. The NLT version, in that same verse, it, say, it reads like this. Uh, and the 36th verse says, but you haven't believed in me, even though you have seen me. Even though you have seen me, you haven't never believed in it. However, those that the Father gives me will come to me, and I will never reject them. 
38 verse says, For I have come down from heaven to do the will of God. Who sent me? Not to do my own will, but to, he said, well, no, he let him know, I'm here to do the will of God, the one that sent me. He said, now you have seen it, but you still won't believe it. That's, that's, that's the bad now. We don't want to miss God because we see what God is doing. We have seen it and he has revealed it to us, but we still don't want to believe it. Give it, he got you everything laid out for you for you to be able to receive from him and you see it. And he's telling you all the time what it do, what it takes to do the work of the Lord. He tells you all the time what it takes. And it's just as simple as, as this. Just believe. Only believe it. Just believe what he's trying to give it to you. And if you if you asking the question, you try to put forward front, saying, I want to receive it, and he tells you, then the bottom line is the least you can do is believe what he said. How you gonna come to someone and ask them a question? And then don't want to hear the answer that they have to give you. We, we do that all the time. We ask a question and then we think we know the answer and we're trying to answer for them even though we ask the question. And, 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 and unfortunately, sometimes that's the way we do. We, we, we say, look, look, what, how do you do this? And then you go try to tell people how to do it. Why would you ask God how to do the works of God and then God goes to try to explain to you before he can explain it to you, you go try to tell him I know what to do. And that's the way some of us is. We, 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 we try to do that and then we try to be so smart to where we try to out, outsmart God. And God said, the only thing you have to do is just believe because I already showed it to you. If I just showed it to you, all you have to do is put forth the faith. My God, how, can, how much easier can it be to do the work of God when he said, if you really want to do the work of God, I'm showing you to you and, and you still won't believe. Even my Father which is in heaven have drawn you into me and I'm giving you the opportunity to come to me. And everyone that God gives me, I will in no wise reject. But if you really want it, you can get it. But a lot of times we, want, we say we want it, but we really don't want it. We say we need it, but we really don't need it. Because as soon as God goes try to give it to us, we try to tell him how we want it to happen. We try to tell him how we, we think it should go. We try to tell him how, how we want it planned out. We only thing we have to learn to do is when God, and we really sincere with the question that we're asking God, and God go to go to tell us how to do it, then the only thing we got to do is just believe it. Nah, preacher, it can't be that just that simple. It is just that simple. Jesus said, if you want it, if you asking me what must I do to do the works of God, God is saying, just believe. It's right there in black and white, the King James Version. He's telling you all you need to do is believe. Once you're going to believe it, then you're going to activate those different areas in life to where you can walk according to how you believe. How can they say they believe me on the language that when they call? Read, read the 10, Romans 10 and, and, and see what it says. Romans 10 said the word is now to thee, even in thy mouth. Even in thy mouth, we speak it sometimes, but we still don't believe it. But if we will just learn to believe what we are saying and learn to believe and actually put forth the word and confess it with our mouth and believe it in our heart, then we shall be saved. But we got the Lord to do it. Because he said, in, let me read on, and he said in the last days, if we don't believe like we said, like he have, have laid it out for us and we have put forth the, the faith in it, then in the last days, then when it's time to go back when it, when it comes, he said, don't, you're going to be the ones that go back with it. It's the ones that don't believe, it's the ones that's going to be left down here. Not the ones that did the good works, but didn't believe. Not the ones that had the good money and put forth the effort and didn't believe. He said the ones that believe and then did the work, those are the ones that going to go back when he comes. He said, for he came down. He did the work. Third night verse said, and, and, and this is the Father's will which hath sent me, that of all which he hath giving me, I should lose nothing, but should raise it up again in the last day. He's not going to lose nothing that the Father has given to him. But why, 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 why would these Jews be lost when God has already given them a plan up to salvation? Why would we be lost 
if God has already given us the way to salvation? Why will we, we, we end up in hell when God has already given us a way out? And the only reason why we can do that is because we won't believe in what he tells us to do. We won't believe in the way that he tells us to come. If we would just put forth the faith, put forth the faith, then we'll find out that God will go to open up doors. How can you hear the word of God and then, then listen to it and then don't do what it tells you to do and then get mad at everybody else because you ain't making it into the kingdom? It's going to be some people that's going to get there and going to be mad and not going to be able to walk in because they heard the word. And remember, I preach this all the time. And the reason why the, the word benefits some and don't benefit the other, when they heard the word, they didn't put the faith with the word. And so, therefore, the word did not profit them. And that's what's going on in these last days. The word has already came. The word has already made the way. The word has already been provided. And the reason why we won't, we'll, we'll lose out and miss out and not be in profit from the word is because we won't put forth the faith. And then we'll try to tell God how to work it out out the way we feel like we want it worked out. And God has already told you how to work it out. Amen. And, and the 40th verse it said, and thus, and this is the will of God, that sent me, that everyone which sees the Son and believes on him, here you go again, and believes on him, may have everlasting life. Plain and simple, everybody that seen the Son of God, that seen me, that everyone which sees the Son and believes on him, see it with your eyes. See the Son of God. R read it. Be quoting the scripture and say in the beginning was the word and the word was God and the word is God. And we are saying that Jesus is the word being manifested and incarnated here in the flesh. And we know who he is. See the son of God, but yet still won't believe. Everyone that see it and believe on him may have everlasting life. And I will raise, there it is again, I will raise him up at the last day. It's, it's just as simple as that, is they got to believe. It's just as simple as that. It's, it, we, we can't believe anything else but what the words say. That, that, and that's what some people are going to have to pay for, is because some of the stuff that the word, they say in the word said, the word did not say that. We got to learn to, to learn to stay in the word of God and believe what the word says and not fall it out those different, be like that bubble out there on that seat that every time the wind blow up, we, we fall it out there. We have to stand on the word and live by the word. And then when we do that, then when God going to do it, what he does because of our faith, and as he said this morning in, in, in Adam and her dedication, our dedication to God is what's going to give us to the point to where we believe it in the word and we stand with the word and we short our dedication. And when he comes back, we're going to be able to go back with him. We can't go back and expect to go back with him if we, when he comes back, we ain't been faithful to what he done. We can't do it. We just can't do it because we just stick with him. He said, all the thing you have to do is just believe. Believe it. The power belongs to him. But we got to learn to believe what he said. The Jews then, and I'm going to read this next verse and I'm almost done here. The Jews in the 41st verse, the Jews then murmured at him. Because he said, I am the bread which came down from heaven. And listen to what they said. Listen to what they said. Listen to what they said. They said, and they said, is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whom the father and the mother we know? How is it that then that he said, I came from heaven? Is this not this little son of man? That we already know. We used to watch this boy grow up. And now this boy talking some crazy stuff like that. We seen him grow up. We, we watched like this Mary's son. But because they couldn't believe and they go to mama, these are the same folks that said in the few verses up that give us this bread. I want it. These are the same folks that said, give it to me. I want it. Whatever it takes, I'll do it. These are the same folks 
But then when they seen and he said something that they couldn't agree with, now these are the same folks that murmured and complained. Said that this is not Mary's son, Jesus, son of the carpenter. They knew that they, they, this is the source of, the, of the, where everything is coming from. This is the source of where everything is, is being provided for us. This is the man that came down here to live the life so that way we may go back when, when, he, when it's time, when it, on a set time at that point. You know how that's going to say, in the moment of a twinkling of an eye, our bodies are on the one, that same spirit that, that he had that's living in us now will change our mortal bodies that we may be able in the moment of a twinkling of an eye to go back when, when he comes. This is the same Jesus. That's talking to us. This is the same Jesus that has been talking to us from in the past few months that has been, has been killing us and has been telling us the same word you got to believe on what I tell you to do. This is the same one that having the conversation. But we won't believe. Now, now the same Jesus that, that they're talking about, now he, he letting them know if you really want it, you can receive it. And I'm telling you today, if you really want it, you can receive it. Because the Jesus that, that, that said the only thing you have to do is just believe it's the same conversation that, that he is having with us right now. When the word go forth, when, when the word is being taught, when the word is being preached, and you know it's coming directly from the, the Bible, and the word is telling us what we need to do, then what we have to do, we have to learn to put faith with the word. Because if we don't put the faith with it, and we say, well, that's, that's for you to do, that's not for me to do, then we're missing out. We're missing out on what God is trying to get you to do. He's trying to draw you. Trying to bring you into a more better way. But, we, but because we can't get over it, we want to tell God how to do what we want him to do for us. When we ask the question, "Go, Lord, do it for me. And God going to do it. And then we try to tell him how to do it. That's, that's, that's just bad. That's, 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 a, that's a flawed concept. When God going to do it, the only thing we have to do is just believe what he's doing. Believe what he said. And when we do that, then God, God will show us that, that everything that we do, if we put forth the faith, everything that we do, it will profit us, each and every one of us. That's the reason why he, he takes you through some valleys, that's so you can learn to trust him. That's the reason why he takes you through some storms, so you can learn to trust him. Not to the point to where your faith won't fail. Uh, he, he actually wants you to make sure that you endure that your faith endures, so therefore you can come out of this situation. As I said before, and Peter, in that situation with Peter, as I said last Sunday, when, when they go on through and, and the devil want to sift you as weak, Jesus is not rebuking the devil in every situation of our lives. He wants us to go through it. He wants us to go through it so that way we can maybe believe while we're going through it, that we put the faith in it. That's the reason why his prayer was for Peter was that his faith do not fail him. He, didn't he could have rebuked the devil, but the devil had to go. But what he did was he, he allowed the devil to continue to on, on with that situation. He prayed that his faith don't fail him. So therefore, when he come in on the other side of it, then that's the time that he goes back and strengthen his brother, that's the time you go back and you put the glory back in God. That's the time you go back and you tell that it was God that did it. That's the time you go back and you let people know that, that God is able to carry you through. Only thing you got to do is just believe it. No other greater God. We want to we see a burning bush, but God is not showing you a burning bush. God is showing you his word. And his word is telling you if you would just believe it, and do what it says, then you will be able to go back when when he comes. But we look, we, we I, I don't believe that. I, I want to see that burning bush. I want God to talk to me. Don't you remember how Israel was? They didn't want to hear Moses. And I'm trying to get out of this. They didn't want to hear Moses. They wanted to hear directly from God. And then with God, with the speaking and the thunder, then they said, no, Lord, we want to hear Moses now. We, it, it, people, people don't want to hear. They say, I want to hear that word from God. They try to tell God how to do things. And God is telling you, only thing you have to do is learn to believe. 
And if you believe in what I've already said, then, then watch God work it out. Your bodies can be healed if you just believe. You can, you can be delivered if you just believe. The word is the word. But if we don't believe it, then that word is not prophecy to us. It's not profitable to us. If we, we can't receive it. That's why some people can get it and, 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 and receive it and grow with it. And other people get it, can hear it, the same message. And then they still, because they didn't put faith with it. They didn't believe. That message goes in one ear and out the other. But we as people of God, we don't want to be like these Jews. We don't want to be like that. And that's the reason why God has been carrying me through this. The power belongs to him. We don't want to be like that. We don't want to put our confidence in what these people are saying and watching and see it in the Bible and know what these people outcome is going to be because the word tells us what the people outcome is going to be because they don't believe. We want to believe. We want to see the power of God working in our life. We want to see the dead raised. We want to see people being uh, healed from sickness. But the only way we're going to be able to do that, we have to believe. I want to go back with him when he come. The only way I'm going to be able to go back with him when he come, I got to believe. I got to believe what his word said. He said just as simple as he told them today. Only believe. He said, when they asked him, what is the works of God? This is it. He said, this is the work of, of God. It's nothing that's extravagant. It's nothing that you that you got to go out and turn ten backflips and and say ten hail marys. He said, "This is the work of God that ye believe on the one that He has sent." How much more simpler can we get than that? Just believe in Jesus. The Corinthians pick it up. We preach Jesus. We don't preach ourselves. We preach Jesus. If we can. Preach it and put it out there and, and then the people see it and hear the gospel that is being preached and they put forth their faith in it. Then those, the, that's when the Bible tells us those are the ones that to be baptized. That great commission. When once we have preached the word to them and we have preached the word to them and they believe it, then them are the ones that are going to be baptized. Them are the ones that are going to be saved. Them are the ones that's going to come out. And the father said, that he just told us today, those are the ones that he, that he had brought out. If they just stay committed to him, those would be the ones that he would keep because he won't reject no one. He's going to keep everything and every one that the father gives to him. So, so don't, don't, don't lose faith in these, these last and evil days. Just continue to keep your faith in the one that, that has already caused you. Continue to keep your faith in the one that has already have showed you the way. Continue to believe. And then, then Hezekiah Walker had to put a song out. His love is so amazing. He's so amazing. He is so amazing to the point where he loved each and every one of us to the point to where all we have to do is come to him and believe. And if we believe, he's so amazing enough to he'll cover us. If y'all you, you, know the song, he said he's so amazing that he sacrificed. He sacrificed for who? For me. For you. For each and every one of us that would only, guess what? It comes right back to it. That will only believe in the one whom God has sent. He sacrificed for him. Simply because what? Down through time he saw each and every one of us. Each and every one of us that have heard the word. And that will come to the, the, the reality that I believe. I know it's crazy. How can I, I, how can I know that, that the air is and the wind is blowing outside? And when I go out there and I hear it, I hear it rumbling and I can't see it, but I believe it's there because it's, his presence is right there. And that's the same way we go. How can I believe in someone who, 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 who I'm seeing? I'm seeing his presence. I can't see him always, but I can feel it. I can feel them just tingling down from the top crown of my head to the sole of my feet. I can feel them. And I know it was nobody but God. I can't give this to no man because it belongs to God. Can't give it to no one else. Because the power still belongs to God. Once have I spoken it. Twice have I heard. Power belongs to God. He got the power to raise the dead. I was there one day, but he had the power to bring me in. So I'm telling you, all we have to do is only believe in what the word has told us to do. And when we do that, 
The power belongs to God. God is going to save. He's going to keep everyone that the Father. Jesus said, I'm going to keep everyone that the Father has given me. I will lose not one. And so I want to be a part of the one that the Father done gave him. Because I don't want to be missing out on what the blessings of God simply because I don't believe. And I'm praying that we, we as a people of God, that we don't miss out on what God has said in these last and evil days because we don't believe. The Lord is coming back. And everyone that, 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 that have their faith in God is going to be the ones that's going to go back with him when he comes. Everyone that believes in that day when he shows up is going to go back with him when he comes. But we got to be the ones, make sure that we be the ones that go back with him. And the only way we're going to do that, we have to believe in the Son. We have to believe in the one that the Father has said. So church, I'm going to ask you, just look at your life today. Make sure that we're believing. Make sure that we're not being like these Jews that said, Lord, I want that bread. And then when he go to telling us how the bread is and who the bread is, and then we're going to reject the bread because we don't want to receive that because he's that little boy son that we don't watch grow up. We, that marriage boy. Don't, don't, don't miss out on what God is saying because you're trying to say that marriage boy that, that we watch. That Joseph boy. That's the carpenter's boy. And he's trying to give you a way into the kingdom of God. But you can't receive it because you're still looking at it as being Mary's little boy. God bless you. I hope I said something to help you. Only believe what God is trying to say. And just do what he says you to do. Thank you.